Hello and welcome to Taiwan Talks. I'm Ian Kavat. Today we speak to Audrey Tan, Taiwan's Minister of Digital Affairs, about the fight against authoritarianism. Taiwan is partnering with fellow e-powerhouse Lithuania. And in the second half of our show, we take a look at how disinformation deliberately and covertly spread is obscuring the truth and harming democracy. My special guest today is Audrey Tan, Moda, Ministry of Digital Affairs Minister, former Minister Without Portfolio and former hacker. Minister Tan, a warm welcome to the show. Still a hacktivist. <laughs> okay. But first, every year on January 13th, Lithuanians light candles at home and gather around bonfires near the Vilnius TV tower and on Independence Square near the Parliament building. On this day, 32 years ago, 14 civilians died trying to defend Lithuania's independence from the Soviet Union. Known as Defenders of Freedom, thousands formed human barricades around Lithuanian state institutions while they were attacked by Soviet tanks. That was footage from 1991 when Mikhail Gorbachev sent Soviet troops to take over Lithuania's state broadcaster at Vilnius TV Tower. It was only 10 months following the country's declaration of independence from the Soviet Union, the first ex-Soviet state to do so. Minister Tan. So this was your first overseas trip as mm -hmm. minister of your new, new, new ministry. Um, you attended the country's Day of Defenders of Freedom, which mm -hmm. of course has incredible significance for Lithuanians. Can you tell me how it resonated mm -hmm. for you as a Taiwanese? Yeah, definitely. Uh, so just like us, uh, they were facing overwhelming odds uh, at the time. Uh, but the ideas of societal resilience, that is to say nonviolent resistance, uh, coupled with communication technology, they were defending the TV tower, there was real-time um, satellite coverage uh, that took the image, the video we saw, mm -hmm. just saw, uh, into the uh, living rooms of the world. And so because of that, the world over uh, supported them uh, in their resistance. So I would say that it really resonated with our own experience in setting up communication resilience for Taiwan. Mm. That, that sort of record of history, isn't mm -hmm. it, enabled by technology. Mm -hmm. Now you spoke, um, whilst you are in Lithuania, uh, at Free Digital mm -hmm. Democracy Dialogue event about how democracy itself mm -hmm. was, in the past, a radical Experiment. experiment, yes. I mean, I think mm -hmm. this is fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, it, in this concept, you acknowledge that um, democracy doesn't just fall from the sky, that you actually have to work hard for yeah, it. And freedom is never free. Yeah. <laughs> and we, we have to, of course, uh, keep innovating to make sure that democracy resonates uh, with not just our people, but also with democracy network. That is to say, people who believe in democracy and now connect it through digital means so that we're, in a sense, neighbors, even not on a geopolitical sense, uh, but on the cyberspace, uh, we join by shared values. Mm. And, and yet there is propaganda, of course. Um, from the people who mm -hmm. oppose democracy, from mm -hmm. authoritarianism, oh, yeah. that democracy is failing. Yeah, a couple of years ago, uh, we heard many uh, ideas such as only authoritarianism, top-down social control is able to overcome the pandemic. Um, of course, nowadays we know it's not a fact, but it's been the kind of rhetoric we've been hearing uh, for quite some time now from Taiwan. So I think our work, uh, along with Lithuania and many others in the Democracy Network, is to show that democracy can deliver even better than authoritarian models. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the experience of the West mm -hmm. in terms in terms of you know, turning the corner mm -hmm. on the pandemic has showed that. Exactly. You know, in terms of the innovation of mm -hmm. the vaccines themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so you are the first ever Taiwan digital minister. Yes. Um, could you tell us a little bit about MODA mm -hmm. um, and also you know, how the National Institute of Cybersecurity also fits into that? Sure. So uh, the MODA's call uh, is to enhance the digital resilience for all. Uh, by resilience, we mean, for example, communication resilience that enables us to still communicate over satellite, even when uh, our submarine cables are cut by large earthquakes, uh, natural or unnatural, uh, <laughs> or the societal resilience, making sure that the journalists uh, get a fair coverage as well as a um, like reasonable uh, pay uh, from 
beyond the global um, multinational uh, social media companies uh, to ensure that they co-prosper instead of just the global multinational companies uh, dominating social media, taking away the journalists. And that dialogue platform is also our purview. And also on the National Institute of Cybersecurity or NICE, our role is to ensure that all the governmental agencies, critical infrastructure, and so on, upgrade uh, to the latest um, versions of the cybersecurity strategic system, including the Zero Trust architecture and also the T-Road for data exchange. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit about the kind of attacks, mm -hmm. maybe the cyber attacks mm -hmm. that Taiwan is experiencing, mm -hmm. you know, even on a daily basis? Yeah. So um, before we even formed as a new ministry uh, last August, early August, uh, there was a military drill, if you remember, <laughs> following the U.S. Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visits. And it's not just a military drill, it's also a cyber drill. Uh, we have seen, for example, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the President's Office, National Defense Ministry's websites. Uh, being disrupted, uh, the height of which in a single day, 23 more times than the previous peak mm -hmm. of the denial of service. Now, just to keep a website busy, like keep dialing to keep a telephone line busy, doesn't do by itself much. But when coupled uh, with disinformation, with harmful uh, ins information that says, oh, we've taken over uh, this ministry and that ministry, it has an amplifying effect. Mm -hmm. So both cyber attacks in terms of denial of service and also information manipulation uh, combine in a hybrid way. And that is what we face uh, on a daily basis. It's basically a multi-pronged approach to destabilize our trust in democratic institutions. Mm -hmm. And specifically in the Taiwanese government, mm -hmm. loss of, of confidence and trust. Mm -hmm as well as mm -hmm. then also maybe disinformation. Exactly, they feed into one another. Um, and you attended the day of the Defenders of Freedom with Ziggy Mantis mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He actually visited Taiwan last year. And I thought that one of the things that he said in his speech in Taipei mm -hmm. was very interesting. He said that the biggest provocation to mm -hmm. tyrants and to autocrats is weakness. Mm -hmm. um, now, this was in response, of course, to his own country's mm -hmm. history, Lithuania, uh, which uh, Russia had continually told, don't provoke us mm. by you know, arming yourself. Don't provoke mm. us by getting close to, to the US. Now, China, mm -hmm. of course, also has this narrative, mm -hmm. continually warns Taiwan not mm -hmm. to provoke mm -hmm. China. Can you explain some of the narratives that China mm. uses against her? Well, as I've told BBC Hard Talk, uh, I think strategic uh, clarity is not escalation. We're certainly not the escalating uh, party. Uh, and I think the main uh, propaganda, if you will, uh, was um, basically that only authoritarian models are effective in terms of responding to the societal challenges such as pandemic or the infodemic. Uh, so I think the best counter move for us is not escalation, but to simply prove that democracy can deliver and sometimes better when it comes to large societal challenges. Thank you, Minister. Taiwan wants to help Ukraine rebuild its teaching environment and build back from war. Grunau High School in the western city of Lviv received laptops, tablets and power generators. It was a collaboration between Taiwan's government, PC maker Acer and Ukrainian Catholic University. More Ukrainian schools and kindergartens will receive donations in the next phase. The project aims to help the country build resilience through digital learning and make schools centers for national revitalization. There were images there of Ukraine schools in places like Irpin and Borodyanka. Um, Minister, this um, Taiwan can help free the future partnership between Taiwan and Ukraine. Tell us more about mm -hmm. this project. Certainly. So uh, I talked to the Minister of Economy and Innovation, uh, Armanete, uh, in Lithuania, and she believes that Taiwan can really help uh, to provide, uh, jointly with Lithuania, a digital layer when it comes to digital education. Certainly in Taiwan, starting last year, uh, all our school children have tablets uh, when they uh, learn their uh, really anything right in school. Uh, this provides not just resilience uh, on connectivity, but also makes what was used to be literacy, that is to consuming standardized material, into competence, that is to say students can co-create with each other, with the tablets or the notebook when they get older, as a co-creation device. Mm -hmm. Now, because we have plenty of experience building that kind of education systems on a digital layer, mm -hmm. uh, we really want to help um, Ukraine, uh, and I think Lithuania is a great partner in this because they are closer to Ukraine and also understands their actual needs on the ground. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about 
you know, how this can also be mm-hmm. sort of the national revitalization, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the children, the next generation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certainly. So uh, when the children are competent in terms of uh, co-creation, they naturally uh, get access to a wider global digital economy. That is to say their work, even when their homeland is still under reconstruction, is not limited to the physical neighborhood, but rather has um, the potential to extend to a global neighborhood that shares the same democratic values. Use. So whether they're interested in design or coding or really anything that can be delivered over the internet, it means that they can still um, earn a living uh, when they uh, finish education with the global economy. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Minister. Now, back to Lithuania. The Baltic country and Taiwan are expected to sign an agreement to develop chip technology and bolster Lithuania's semiconductor industry. The project between Lithuania's Teltonika IoT Group and Taiwan's Industrial Technology Research Institute could see the co-founding of a new chip fab. It's part of a deal announced in November 2022 and a Taiwanese investment in Lithuania's chip industry worth 10 million US dollars. Taiwan's government says its aims are to strengthen the resilience of the democratic supply chain in the face of coercion by autocracies. Earlier this year, Taiwan launched a $200 million equity investment fund and a $1 billion loan facility for Lithuania and other central and eastern European countries. Minister, Mm -hmm. um, now now whilst we are not going to focus on the chips, Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, uh, wanting to build the democratic supply chain. Mm-hmm. That is something that you yeah, also... That, that's sharing know-how, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. The E-Tree uh, was and still is the incubator of much of Taiwan's semiconductor supply chain. And sharing this know-how, I think, is very important as we are sharing our um, like cyber resilience know-hows and so on with Lithuania. Mm-hmm. Let's talk um, about mm-hmm. the satellite technology. Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, for example, uh, Lithuania, uh, as uh, Estonia and many other uh, jurisdictions in that region uh, is constantly planning uh, what could happen and what would happen uh, if the, there's a like disaster uh, affecting their data storage. And so to that end, uh, they are also working to modernize uh, their data storage systems uh, and communication systems to focus on a secure use of the public cloud for backup purposes and also the non-geostationary satellites uh, in order to maintain connectivity even when the fiber optics and other landlines are cut. Mm-hmm. Now these two concerns, the public cloud backup uh, as well as the separate resilience via satellites are also Taiwan's priority areas and is within MODA's purview. So I sincerely believe that we do not need to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, Mm -hmm. and can share our know-hows and our planning together uh, to enhance resilience for all. Um, and this is something that Ukraine obviously mm-hmm. has managed to, to harness. To, to demonstrate yes. uh, to the world uh, <laughs> through um, Starlink. Through war. Yeah. <laughs> yes, amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also been reports that Taiwan's mm-hmm. National Institute of Cyber Security, mm-hmm. obviously that you manage, mm-hmm. will invest in Lithuania's cyber security. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you tell us about this investment? Sure. So uh, as a chair of NICE, uh, we have uh, recently um, in our board meeting uh, discussed our ways to uh, invest with uh, uh, countries that have signed the DFI, the Declaration for the Future of the Internet, along with Taiwan. Mm-hmm. So, along with the US, uh, Ukraine, Lithuania, and so on, they're all DFI signing countries. Mm-hmm. And these countries share the same values when it comes to democratic resilience, and some of them are also in the front line, so to speak, mm-hmm. and have to plan their cyber defense uh, for the for the worst, right? Mm-hmm. So, to these uh, democracies, we say that first, the NICE, uh, when they're doing the research, on awareness, on cyber resilience, on counter disinformation, and so on. It's not that uh, we're uh, going to tell them how to use those technology, but we can share some of the research and development with them. And they also have their own research and development uh, capabilities. So once they learn something in terms of cyber resilience, they can also feed back. So this is our goal in joining our investment together in making sure that the latest and the greatest ideas uh, can uh, propagate uh, throughout the DF. FI network. Mm. And, and because this is all, all underway at the mm-hmm. moment, uh, at what point
point do you think mm -hmm. that this would become a fully functioning mm -hmm. network? Yeah, so it's expected uh, that later this year, uh, the startups and the um, unicorns, uh, fintech and so on, uh, and also cybersecurity uh, related companies uh, from Lithuania uh, would visit us here in Taipei uh, to suss out the details. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we're looking forward to more MOUs uh, signed, uh, maybe on paper, maybe electronically, <laughs> <laughs> between our ministry, uh, our NICE, or the Democracy Network, uh, with our Lithuanian counterparts. So uh, more news uh, in a couple months. Mm. Um, and I also understand that you are the first Lithuanian e-resident. Uh, no, I'm the first minister <laughs> to, to be a Lithuanian oh, e-resident. Right. I'm right. told there's uh, several Taiwanese that was already curious enough uh, to be a Lithuanian e-resident. And they're really like uh, our citizens' digital certificate, uh, which we also issue to residents uh, from abroad. Uh, but I think the e-residency idea uh, really transcends borders, and it allows us to, well, in addition of uh, signing MOUs electronically, mm -hmm. uh, also potentially opening bank accounts, starting companies, and so on, uh, drastically lowering the transaction costs when it comes to doing business between Taiwan and Lithuania. Mm -hmm. and, and which services do you think you will make use of? Well, maybe not uh, <laughs> starting a company because I'm still a public mm -hmm. servant, but simply signing documents. Uh, because previously, uh, we have in Taiwan pretty good electronic uh, signing capabilities. All my official documents and so on could be electronically signed. And in Lithuania too, uh, their tax filing for personal tax, uh, just like Taiwan, uh, also just take a couple of minutes. Uh, their official documents are all electronically signed and verified. But to uh, across these two jurisdictions, uh, mm -hmm. most of the actual documents that's exchanged are still based in paper because mm -hmm. we don't yet uh, cross-recognize each other's electronic signatures in many critical commercial um, transactions. So that's what the MODA staff is currently working to ensure that those two uh, very um, digitally powerful uh, systems can interoperate with one another. Mm. And I'm interested because you chose Lithuania mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. your very first overseas trip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now it seems that from what you said, there's uh, mm -hmm. many reasons for that. Yes. Um, because of you know the, uh, mm -hmm. the sort of e-government, yes. you know capabilities, mm -hmm. you know the values and everything like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, for you, does that sum it, sum mm -hmm. it up? Yes, uh, and also I would like to thank uh, our Taiwanese representative office in Lithuania for facilitating uh, this travel. And also uh, in the joint project to help Ukraine, uh, our representative office in Poland also did a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and do you consider that the uh, trip was a success? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's a resounding success. Mm -hmm. And I look forward uh, to more collaboration with Lithuania, but also with other DFI countries that are on the front line. Mm -hmm. And Ukraine? Mm -hmm. Yes, they're, they're literally in the front <laughs> <Yes>. line. <laughs> right. So uh, in terms of school uh, reconstruction, in terms of digital layers and so on, truly the sky is the limit. And now that uh, we have uh, our delegate, my colleague, uh, physically in Ukraine, mm -hmm. uh, we can uh, open more doors. And um, as I said, uh, I think we stand together in our common struggle against autocracy. Minister Tan, thank you mm -hmm. so much for joining Taiwan Talks today. Thank you.